Good morning, good afternoon, um, depends on where you are on this planet. Uh, welcome to another masterclass of the Court HDU masterclass series. Uh, we're happy to be hosting today um, a business collaborator and a dear friend, uh, JP Eaglin. He is joining us from Bali, and uh, I think the shirt uh, speaks a lot, JP, it, you know, Bali vibe. So it says afternoon there. And um, we're excited to be talking about Web3. JP is going to be sharing some of uh, the insights he's gleaned from uh, his really multidisciplinary experience. Uh, I've seen JP run uh, art festivals, I've seen JP run concerts, I've seen JP develop websites and platforms, I've seen JP work with NFTs. So he's really a, a well rounded. Uh, has a well-rounded skill set, but his his heart is in sustainability. His heart is in development. His heart in building communities, and he approaches technology through the gateway of art. So it's not the other way around. It's not like oh, technology, and I'm going to bring in some art. Uh, he's a creative director and has has done many outstanding uh, accomplishments within within that scene but most relevant to today, today's session is his ability to bring together and bridge uh, tech and uh, art to deliver uh, impact at scale so uh, welcome everybody and jp thank you so much for joining us today it's great to see you on screen hopefully we'll see you live uh, at some point and uh, the floor is yours. Boom. Thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be hosted by you, brother. Uh, great to see your face. Hopefully, yeah, one day soon, I'll see you in person uh, in Jordan. And uh, so, uh, yes, uh, my name is JP Eaglin, uh, originally from Washington, D.C., uh, lived all over the states from New York to Los Angeles, San Francisco, New Orleans, uh, eh, developing communities uh, but then i left the united states in 2003 to extend this uh these world travels uh but uh before i left i was became founder of 26 public schools in los angeles and then now we have some in texas and memphis as well but we would go to the highest need communities in la and create public schools there and uh our first community had a 75 percent dropout rate and we immediately turned that into a 96 maturation rate to Fourier University. Uh, I was the chief technology officer there. I was the art and music program director. I was the after school program director. I was organizing new communities for new schools. Uh, we were lobbying the state uh, to change laws for education. So it was a lot of community building. And I used uh, technology as a catalyst to bring community together and uplift children and, and all of society. You know. It's, uh, so in developing these schools and having the success there really skyrocketed my whole vision of what was possible on this planet. Uh, my first school was built uh, when I was 23, um, but uh, I felt I was already behind, like I needed to catch up, you know, like uh, I was one of those kids that started university at 14. I was recruited by Howard University in their engineering department. Uh, so I was, my first computer was a Commodore 64, like a, uh, I look young, but I was born in the 70s. Uh, you know, so I was, I was programming DOS and Fortran and Pascal uh, when I was like seven, eight years old. Uh, but I come from a, a family that everyone has great artistic ability. Like my mother's a, a, a prophetic painter. My, my father sings like an angel. Uh, my great grandfather adopted Mahalia Jackson. If you don't know Mahalia Jackson, she was uh, born in 1911 and she was the godmother of gospel music. She was one of Martin Luther King's best friends. And uh, she was the first black person to play Carnegie Hall. And uh, she didn't see uh, singing as uh, entertainment. She was a channel of God. And she used this gift to bring people together and to uplift us and to get us out of the bondage of 400 years of slavery and the oppression of inequality and Jim Crow laws and segregation in the United States. Uh, so I was born into this family that was very creative, very smart, and we were all about social justice. Uh, so growing up, I didn't feel like I really had a choice. Uh, uh, it was 
it was just in my DNA and I had to do this. And over my, the years of experience, I really found ways to uh, create impact on my own terms within my own voice. Uh, and developing the schools really gave me my voice because uh, I was a shy kid growing up, but I was also teaching at this time, developing the schools. So I had hour and a half long classes with 20 to 30 students and they were 14, 15 years old. And you couldn't really skip a beat. Like you give a five second pause and these kids are jumping on, uh, like out of their seats. And like, so you really had to hurl, herd them in and like keep their attention. And this, this is where I really found my voice. Uh, and then since then I've been traveling the world developing a creative design and production studio where uh, I would develop festivals and events where hundreds of thousands of people would come. And I utilize the arts and technology to create impact. Uh, so uh, a year before Corona, I had moved to Bali. And uh, so I was here when the, the pandemic started and I started volunteering full time. And I'm gonna share with you uh, the beginning process of uh, this, this new foundation, this organization. So I, I have a, a business and I have an NGO and I, I blend them together to uh, create this model that uh, we're gonna replicate all over the planet. So we're, we're, we're doing the case study here on Bali and starting Q1 2023, we are ready to bring on partners in cities all over the planet to replicate this model that you, utilizes Web3 to create massive impact for NGOs all over the planet. So uh, I'm gonna play a five minute video of, uh, so I was, this first NGO, it, they're called Plastic Exchange. And while we were volunteering, I, I met this amazing uh, film crew from LA called Good Form. And uh, whatever project you have, it, the most important thing is being able to tell your story. It, you, you could have the cure for X, Y, and Z, but if you can't tell the story, people won't adopt it. So uh, we found these amazing storytellers and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share how the power of video took this one NGO that had zero funding and then put them on the global scale to where uh, the founder was nominated by CNN as hero of the year. And then he made it to the top 10, he went to New York and then funding just went through the roof. Uh, and it was, the catalyst was this one video right here. Uh, so this is Plastic Exchange. Uh, and here we go, Let me share my screen. At the beginning of 2020, when the COVID hit, people has a hard time to provide the basic needs, which is rice in Bali. And I saw there is so many plastic, not just in Bali, but all over the world. So I start the plastic exchange. Plastic exchange is successful because it's really, really simple. People bring their plastic and then we exchange it with rice. Yang duduk plastik, berdik-berdik tumbuhan. Oh, man, oh, oh kresek jenik. Dia ingin kresek barak, man. Oh, yang sebuah, man, plastik, abu kumo, bang, bas. Yang sampun mulai petani, mulai yang umur 20, sudah mengikuti orang tua ke, ke sawah. Padi ini kebutuhan pertama. Kalau tidak ada beras, kan tidak hidup. 
The plastic exchange work just like an ecosystem. One is supporting the others. There is one hand on the bottom and then one hand on the top. I really want to bring this hand together. In Bali, we call it Tatwamasi. The giver become a receiver and the receiver become a giver. Yang nuduk plastik karena kang bersih sekarang. Jangan kau manfaat sih, jangan nabi. Kau yusin di tengah-tengah, jadi pun terus ni mah. Yang winter sampah plastik, yang perang supaya ibu pertiwi boleh kembali subur. Every month. We collect about 15 tons of plastic. We give away five tons of rice. And then we feed 15,000 people. The people win because they get the rice. The farmers win because we buy the rice from the farmers. And the environment wins because we clean the environments from plastic. Dignity, prosperity, and environment. Free itakarana. This is like a cycle to help people, to feed the people, to clean the environment, and really give them the sense of pride for who they are as a human being. At the end of the day, you look back, all this dharma, all the effort, God, I'm moksa. I'm happy because I do what I do. This is a metaphor like in the Balinese Hindu philosophy. If you want to change the world, change yourself. We need to solve this problem together because we cannot do it ourselves. So yes, this uh so from this project. <laughs> so from this project, uh a, this was one of dozens of NGOs that I was uh, working with. And as the new craze of NFTs and like the blockchain were developing, and uh, I was looking at how we could utilize this technology to empower all these NGOs. And uh, from carbon credits and green credits and tracking all of the good that these projects were doing, so as a way to be able to tell the world all the good, and then they would be able to raise more money, right? And recruit more uh, amazing talent to work with them. And so in doing this, uh, I created a, a company called Bali Collective. And Bali Collective is a combination of a yayasan, like a yayasan is a, a Balinese or Indonesian NGO uh, with our LLC. And I'm going to walk you through kind of like how we go about doing this. So uh, like I love technology, but technology is, uh, is a catalyst for change. It is not the, the, the answer. It is not the truth. Uh, the, the truth is the people in the, in the world that we're here living on and, and the people that we can affect in our lives and our, how our family grows and, and what we leave behind. Yeah. So how do we ensure that we have a better future? What tools do we have access to? A Web3 is one of them. And uh, we're just scratching the surface of the utility and the possibility that Web3 can give us today. So 
Uh, this is a, a kind of brief uh, bird's eye view of, of what we're dropping. Um, so we're building sustainable ecosystems on and off chain. So here in Bali, this is a mecca for blockchain and Web3 projects. People from all over the world are moving here. They've retired, they made a ton of money off of their crypto and they're all about crypto. They don't wanna talk about anything else from the first second you meet them till uh, saying goodbye. All the conversation is crypto. That's their whole world. And I'm seeing that uh, they're having some issues of growing their audience because they're only about crypto. They, they speak a language that no one else speaks. The majority of the world is, is not on the blockchain yet. Uh, they, they have no idea what an NFT is. They have no idea what blockchain is. And they end up alienating the, the majority of uh, their potential audience. So what we aim to do is really talk to the entire planet, is specifically those who are having a positive viewpoint on wanting to make this world a more sustainable place and bring impact to it. And then sharing these amazing tools that Web3 has. Uh, so, and, and how Web3 can relate to their everyday lives. So we do this by uh, first helping the, the NGOs, but also uh, through helping local businesses, uh, working with government and kings, uh, and then uh, empowering our creative community. So uh, we have uh, four, four main core principles that we live by. Social impact, sustainable business development, innovation, and accessibility. Uh, my, my years with Yaz, he would not stop talking about innovation. And uh, it's, it's a blessing to see him being director of innovation of the entire world, I think now. Like, congratulations on this. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of responsibility, uh, but uh, he's the man for it. So uh, th this is what we live by. Uh, we, everything else is just a tool to ensure that these four core principles thrive in our world. Right, so uh, what does this mean? Like, what are we doing here, right? So we're bridging web two to web three. Uh, we are developing creator economies, utilizing impact NFTs and web three technology. We are the bridge from web two to web three, building sustainable ecosystems on Bali and the entire world. Bali is just our first case study. And then we're creating this model that can adapt to any situation anywhere in the world. Uh, we are a web two and a web three tech company uh, that runs an impact fund with an in-house advertising and marketing agency in a creative design and production studio. So we can take an idea uh, and we know how to implement it into the world, make it look real nice, tell a beautiful story. And we have an amazing tech partner, Nest, that has all these amazing utilities and is really on the forefront of this technology. Uh, so we're bringing impact on chain by connecting real world businesses with Web3 utilities and perks that support social impact initiatives. So uh, this is kind of a, the Bali uh, ecosystem uh, that connects to the global collective, right? So we have Bali collective here. And if you go to the right, uh, you have Worldwide Underground, which is our marketing, uh, marketing and advertising agency and creative design and production studio. This is what generates the content and you know, like brings the people together through developing festivals such as Mural Fest and then other in-person engagements. So we're building an ecosystem first by bringing people together in person. And then we, like throughout the pandemic, we were also live streaming events and, and being a part of a lot of situations just like here, right? So. Uh, but Mural Fest pairs artists with NGOs to create impact NFTs. And these impact NFTs are funding schools. They're collecting thousands of tons of plastic out of the ocean. We're funding orphanages, clean water projects. We currently have 18 NGOs that we have, uh, that we're funding. And there's a long list of other NGOs that we're uh, rolling out over these next months. It, so then these feed our Yayasan, which is our NGO. And the NGO is basically a, a fund that distributes these funds to all these NGOs here on Bali and then soon to be all around the world. 
And then this is connected to our, our tech partner, Nest. Nest uh, started five years ago. Genius cats uh, all over the world. Uh, they just launched their product now. Uh, my business partners uh, helped uh, raise a, a, they've raised six and a half million uh, through a through token fund. And uh, my business partners helped them with their initial raise. And then that's why we were able to have access uh, to be one of their case studies before their launch. Uh, so this is our marketplace. They call themselves a layer zero. They're completely interoperable. You, they can, you can, we can mint on the spot, but then you can take your impact NFTs or any NFT that you create and push it to Solano or, or Ava or Polygon. And then that's where you pay your gas fees. But when you mint them on Nest, zero gas fees, it's a, and they are truly the most secure uh, Web3 network created so far. Because like when you buy an NFT off of uh, Polygon or OpenSea, you don't truly own that NFT. Uh, OpenSea doesn't even own it, but you will through the technology that Nest has. Uh, so what we're doing is creating a, a membership club, right? So in, in the marketing of all of this, the majority of the planet are still uh, allergic to NFTs and blockchain and crypto. Uh, it, it doesn't have a positive reputation. If you're in it, you love it. If you're not in it, uh, you start hearing it and your eyes roll and you're just looking for the exit. Uh, so we have a marketing strategy that really doesn't lean heavy towards Web3. Like people will understand that it's Web3 and impact NFTs, but they're really feeling that they're just part of a membership club in a community uh, and they're helping this great uh, Yaya-san NGO, but then we're offering all these other perks. So we go to hundreds, soon to be thousands of local businesses, whether they're restaurants, spas, uh, you name it, all the businesses that you would attend in the, and spend money at in your community, we're recruiting them to when someone presents their NFT, uh, they scan it and then they automatically get their discount, whether it's a 10%, 30%, buy one, get one. The, the owner of that business is, uh, of the business gets to dictate what this uh, deal is and they can change it whenever they want and they just upload the change and uh, you'll be able to track uh, your spending. And then this is where the gamification um, comes in to where you'll be able to earn points. Every time you use your NFT, you'll, you'll earn points Every time you'll, you'll, you share uh, on Twitter or Instagram, or uh, you'll be able to own, earn points. A, every time a business gives uh, a discount, they also will be able to earn points through this. And then you'll be able to take these points and exchange them for different rewards and prizes uh, within the ecosystem. So, uh, uh -huh. Quick question. We have a question from Ghassan. Could you please clarify, you know, you, you talked about NFTs on OpenSea, for example, and you said, that you don't own the NFT. Uh, so this question, what do you mean you don't own it? So uh, you don't, you think you own it, but the true owner of that NFT lives somewhere else. Like Ocean, OpenSea, when you buy off of OpenSea, OpenSea doesn't hold those NFTs, they don't own them. You know, like someone is sending that, that metadata to OpenSea, and then now you're holding it within your wallet, but like you're truly not the owner of that. And I can send you a beautiful video that really breaks that down that uh, my partner Nest really clarifies. If we have time, we can actually watch that video because like these cats are sharp. Um, it, so, so you own the, the metadata and not the actual uh, digital artifact. As, as yeah, the, the true providence lives somewhere else. But when you mint on Nest, you are the true providence owner of these. On OpenSea, that's not the true providence. Uh, and I, I can give you a, a nice, I can give you a nice list of links that breaks this down and, and clarifies it. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, we can have that as a, as a, you know, a follow up, and uh, maybe you can put the the link of the video in the in the chat at some point. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in in building this uh, impact network out, uh, I was originally going to build a, a directory that was going to host all of the NGOs that were on Bali. And then I was like, who's really gonna look at that? I need to create something that everyone will look at. So I broadened the whole scope to developing a full travel guide or an island guide 
And this is the Bali ecosystem. This would host a, a, a web 2.0 e-commerce and also be a launch pad for our NFTs. Uh, this is the, the, the web two end of the bridge where I can onboard an entire community from the businesses. It will, uh, it will be the web two community for all the web three projects. Uh, if you're looking for a developer, if you're looking for an investor, if you just wanna share your project, everyone can have their profile that they can load up for free and control every, all their content. You can have video, uh, you can have photos, you name it. If you wanna, you can sell your own products off of it. Uh, if you have a hotel, you can book rooms. If you have a restaurant, you can make reservations. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, platform a, that has several uses for pretty much everyone in the community, be able to find what you're looking for and expose your ideas. So then we use this great tool to then shine light on these amazing impact. And the, and the e-commerce, we're looking to be one of these shining lights and the go-to places for sustainable goods in the world. Uh, so we'll start with our, with our Bali and Indonesian community, show this model of how you can uh, work with your local community, support and build uh, uh, sustainable uh, supply chains, and empower all of your sustainable uh, producers of goods. Uh, and we'll get in a little bit in that a little bit more. Uh, so here, here's uh, what we created through uh, support. Like, so we, so we're supporting all of these NGOs and then we created all these impact NFTs. So right now we currently have 24 NFT collections uh, that are supporting 18 NGOs or Yayasans. You know, so we're fueling impact throughout Bali with zero gas fees on the Nest platform. Uh, all of these NGOs have a variety of causes from helping children to animals, to clean water projects, plastic, uh, you name it, they're doing it. And then we have a, a, a vetting process uh, to where we're not just giving these NGOs uh, a blank check, uh, they, they submit projects with budgets, timelines, eh, the materials that they're gonna buy, the staff that they're gonna have. Eh, and then we release the funds in phases. So now we're putting a, uh, this impact on chain and we're able to track impact, right? So if, if one of these NGOs is getting funding from us, but they're not producing, eh, we can stop the funding of it. And until they, they get online, or we just divert that funding to another cause that is in that same arena, uh, whether it's uh, cleaning water or, or building schools or you name it, you know? But, uh, but this is a platform from now, we're, we're changing the paradigm from giving a donation to owning a digital asset that now you can track your, your impact and it becomes more accessible, uh, transparent and accountability is all ingrained on the blockchain now. Uh, th these tools uh, take the fear out of giving money and donating money to an NGO and not knowing where that money is, is going. You know, like, is it going to the, the CEO's Ferrari? Is he taking all of his donors on nice yacht trips? Or is it actually hitting the classroom or like cleaning the plastic out of the ocean? So, uh, you know, I like to make fun imagery. Uh, so, this, this paradigm shift, uh, this can be applied throughout the world now, you know? It, uh, and empowering these NGOs to now have a new revenue stream to where anyone, like, anyone not only just has crypto, with Nest, you can use your credit card and like dozens of other payments that have nothing to do with crypto payments. Like you don't need Ethereum, you know? It, like here we have GoPay, uh, we have uh, uh, OVA and like all these other traditional payment forms that you can buy these NFTs uh, through this plat uh, throughout through Nest, you know? So uh, this is truly bring impact on chain, right? So uh, the, the, the transparency and accountability is really what brought and attracted me to the Web3 uh, blockchain a on-chain engagement. A, once I saw that I can power these NGOs, 
through using this platform, I was all in. And then every day I'm just consuming more information and then finding the people that are on the, the, the forefront of this technology eh, that share a passion also for impact. And what we're finding is that there's not a lot of people using this platform for, uh, for impact. So we've, we, we are kind of this, this niche group that are using Web3 for impact that now we're being called on stage and all these other uh, uh, conferences uh, because we're not just trying to sell an NFT to flip it in five seconds. So like they can just gain royalties and sell and sell and sell and sell. Like uh, we have a completely different uh, model of, of raising money and, and engaging people on the blockchain. You know, like uh, there's many different ways to use the blockchain than just try to find a, a make a quick buck, as they say, you know, it, it can be a true world changer. So our first success story is uh, an orphanage in, uh, here on Bali in, in Umalas, uh, no, in Ungasan. Uh, they have uh, 60 kids there. And in Indonesia, we're the fourth largest country in the world. We're the fastest, fifth fastest growing economy. We're the 17th largest economy, uh, but you cannot drink the tap water. Everyone is buying their water out of a, a five gallon bottle. Uh, and so, REI Asan also creates uh, rain harvesting units where that collect rainwater and then turn it into drinkable water. So this orphanage will never have to buy water again. Uh, we're breaking ground this month. Uh, and so now in this orphanage, uh, they'll never have to buy water. The, the children there are now learning about sustainability. They're learning about technology. They're learning about blockchain and Web3. Uh, we're engaging with the kids for future NFT projects where whether they wanna draw or they're singers or they're dancers, they're filmmakers. And we take this creativity, create impact NFTs through it. And then these NFTs uh, empower and, and, and uh, create funds, not only for the, the NGO that they're in, but also their own personal projects, you know? So, and, and this orphanage is amazing. They're, like the, the kids are going to universities, they're, they're graduating at the top of their class. A, the founder, Peter, is just a, a beautiful man, like really engages with the kids, like takes them surfing all the time. Like uh, B Bali is a beautiful place that uh, needs, that has a lot of great need. There's a lot of poverty here. There are some of the wealthiest people here and there's some of the most impoverished people. So it, it's really easy to be here and live in your own bubble and forget about how poor the people are. Uh, and living here is much cheaper than living in the States uh, or Europe or m the majority of the world. So people come here and they live like kings, but they're in their own bubble. So one of our aspects is really shine light and uh, be an awareness program for a lot of these projects so that people can now uh, engage with them. Because like we have a lot of br brilliant people on this island and a lot of people want to give, but they don't know how to plug in. And we're trying to create a platform or we are creating a platform that makes it very easy for people to plug in and create impact very easily, giving the skills that they have. Uh, so how do we do this? We look deeper uh, and we create massive marketing and advertising campaigns. Uh, building sustainable ecosystems on and off chain by using web two, web three, print, social media, film, and developing in-person events and festivals, right? So we have a lot of different arenas in this. So we have our Bali Collective, we have our Festival of Mural Fest, we create our impact NFTs, and then we create uh, these fundraising dinners. We find these masterminds, these VCs, these people who care, and we create NFT Diners Club, right? So you'll have 10 to 20 people that are buying an NFT that come to these dinners and they have a mind of wanting to make the world a better place and they have a disposable income and they, they wanna put their money where their mind and their heart is, you know? So we create an environment. And in Bali, like I said, we live in a beautiful place so I can have these amazing villas or rent out a, uh, these cliffside venues and, and have a seven course meal 
with bands and fire dancers. And the topic is all about impact. It, how do we take the resources that we have and apply them to solving the pro our greatest problems that we're facing in the world, right? It, and then we have our, our Yaya-san, our NGO, and then our production company, and then our, our Web3 uh, technology partner, Nest. Uh, and then we build out this festival, this in-person festival. So I first started Mural Fest in 2017 in the United States, in New Mexico, and it became uh, the largest public festival in the, in the history of New Mexico and in the top five largest public art festivals in the world. Uh, within one year, we did two festivals from September to September, 2017 to 2018. Uh, we created 100 public art uh, murals. It, in year two, 2018, we did 50 over 23 days. Uh, I engaged with 200 local businesses supporting 35 uh, NGOs. I helped the mayor get elected. I helped the governor get elected. It was a beautiful partnership of, gov uh, of government and, and uh, like public and private partnership. It, it, and through this, uh, we showed that we can use the arts to create impact. And then through this momentum it, and through uh, the, the evolution of NFTs and the blockchain, I took this same model and then now we put it on chain to create these impact NFTs. So we'll have live painters, we'll create murals. Uh, this picture in the top right, uh, one, one of our, our great partners is the, there's five kings in Bali. And this is one of the kings, King Irawan of, uh, of Karambantan. Uh, so we had our opening ceremonies at the Royal Palace. Uh, and in these five kingdoms in Bali, this is the only kingdom that has never updated their architecture. So we're, we're trying to keep their culture alive. And uh, the first NFT, one of the first NFTs that we minted is to restore this palace. So you can imagine a 350 year old palace is some of the walls are coming down and like, so we rebuild the walls, but then we're also creating a whole video series that interviews everyone in the village from the farmers to the, the royal family to the craftspeople eh, to tell uh, the culture eh, like they're losing their language. Uh, Every day rice fields are being taken over by cement. Eh, eh, this, uh, this advancement of society means the loss of culture. Eh, so we want to put this culture on chain, you know, eh, and then use the, use the blockchain and NFTs uh, to not only uh, keep the history, but create these new revenue streams for these communities. Uh, so we'll have traditional dance. Uh, uh, the, 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 we'll have panels on sustainability, panels on, on Web3. Uh, this goes into the NFT diners. So we get these real cats that like these visionaries and then get them into an enclosed, beautiful uh, setting. And then we break bread together. Uh, some of the, the greatest uh, negotiations have been over a meal. Uh, when you can eat with someone, your stomach is at, a, at rest and uh, at trust, at building. You know, like if someone won't eat with you, you might not want to sign that contract with them, you know? So having a meal, like setting the tone, setting the space is a... Uh, uh, and a great uh, catalyst in, uh, in forming beautiful partnerships. You know, so, so make smart choices in your life, make art your life. And, and I believe that everything that we do is an art form. Uh, whether you're writing code on the blockchain or, or painting paintings, like they are both art forms. This speech is an art form. Uh, you know, like uh, how, we, how we meet people, how we build our lives, these artistic forms that we learn throughout our lives. And the more we pay attention to the details of them, the greater our art form becomes and the more natural they become and the greater our ecosystem becomes. And then more and more people jump onto this ecosystem and the more impact we're able to create. It, so then the engagement, how do we get people to buy these NFTs? like beyond just wanting to, to help the world, 
uh, not everyone is in the space that they just want to help uh, you know, clean plastic out of the ocean or build a school. We want to give perks and utilities to them through this NFT by partnering with these hundreds to thousands of businesses to create this membership club and a loyalty program card, like a membership card. Uh, and through the marketing, we don't even have to label it as an NFT. It can just be a membership club, something that everyone already knows and has used before to where they can just show up with their card, they scan the NFT and, and they get their discount. And the more they use it, the more points they get, we gamify it. Uh, like, you know, like the murals that they show up to, these public art pieces, they'll ha they have uh, QR codes on them. You're able to scan them. You're able to purchase the NFTs, like learn about the NGOs that this mural is uh, representing, learn about the artists, learn about the community that it's in. And then it will take you to another mural and it's a scavenger hunt. And the more you do, the more that you share, the more points you're gonna get that you can turn in for rewards and, and prizes that we'll offer that, are, that, are, that we engage with, with these thousands of businesses. Right. So and then the businesses get more uh, butts in the seats. They get human traffic, uh, loyal customers, and they they feel they have the good feeling of knowing that they're supporting all these amazing causes as well. The 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 public, the general public that buys the NFT, they know that they're helping to build a school or an orphanage or clean uh, clean water project. It, but they're also getting these great discounts in in, in savings of businesses that they traditionally always already go to in the first place. So it's a win-win there. Uh, the Yaya-sans, uh, the NGOs are getting the funding that they need and our ecosystem is uh, fulfilling its mission by supporting the Yaya-sans, by supporting local businesses and, and supporting our entire community as a whole and bringing positive upliftment to, to everyone. Everyone who engages in this comes out a little brighter, a little lighter, a little bit more knowledgeable of how they can plug in and make this world a safer, better place. So how do we build and create an ecosystem, something that everyone can jump onto? And this comes back to this travel guide, this directory, where any person that has a business is, JP, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, man, but uh, I, I just wanted to, to, to create a pause and there's several things that you, 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 you mentioned that are, I think, very relevant to some of the startups. Um, so, you know, JP has, has showcased a, a really great example of, of taking a Web3 technology and creating an ecosystem around creating um, impact. And this has, I, I like the idea of, of bridging between the for good, for benefit, and then for profit. So the, there's a profit and there's, there's you know, money and, and profits are a strong incentive to a lot of the people that uh, are needed to jump in on this. Uh, and then you mentioned, you know, uh, that people don't need to really know that they're buying into an NFT. And I think this is this is uh, perhaps an issue that a lot of startups face when <clears throat> you're a tech company and you understand your tech, you know, you're throwing these words around. And one thing you need to do is to humanize the technology. So maybe we can speak a little bit more to that. And the, the other question, and I would like people, you know, maybe in a couple of minutes, JP, you can just create some space for, for um, people to ask anything that is on their mind. Uh, but the other question that I had on my mind, so I'm thinking of, for example, a, a company like OSHA, right? They um, uh, do water filtering and, and uh, sustainability solutions, basically, for uh, used oils. And uh, you know, so they develop their own filter. And th there could be, for example, uh, an opportunity to integrate NFT. However, they're not going to develop you know, what you guys develop. How can they plug in at a low cost? How can we lower the barrier of entry? to startups that want to start playing around with NFTs, but not necessarily have to develop the platforms. So it, one thing, it's putting it on the blockchain. 
is key for a lot of philanthropists to be able to have this transparency and accountability a, and then you can just track your impact right so uh i'm where our team is like physically building a lot of these uh these tech stuff but like our nest uh web3 tech partner has this app ready for everyone in the world now so uh there was just a, a huge uh web3 conference in singapore token 2049 where they officially launched is so anyone can come and like you can go onto our website muralfest.com and download the app now a uh, so this version of the app uh for, is for Android, and then we're waiting for Apple to give the uh, their 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 dawning of approval. So it'll just be through Safari. But if you go to nes uh, nes .tech, um, their link is also on our site. You can learn all about them. Download the app. They have a, an airy version, a, and then every week they are advancing this technology and uh, creating new utilities. So then any NGO can use this app and people can donate through them and then so like i see an nft uh as another way for people to donate money so if i'm like i have an ngo people aren't buying my nft they're donating money to my ngo and i give them an nft as part of being part of our community now they're not buying an nft they're giving a donation as they always have been, and they can make the tax right off, right? A, that donation is a donation. Now the NFT is just a can just be a free uh, gift that we give them, and this 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 is a great working model for still being an NGO and accepting uh, uh, these donations, right? Uh, did that answer the question, or you want me to go a little deeper? Uh, yeah, and, and and just to kind of clarify, you know, the 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 placeholders, you know, where we're talking about NGOs and we're talking about uh, the community. I mean, hopefully, those startups or startups will will at some point have the disposable income to 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 actually uh, engage in, in such things. But uh, those placeholders, you know, this model does work for for profit as well because you know which partners are you bringing in which um initiatives that you feel is aligned with your core business or adjacent business that you can bring on board to offer uh, kind of their perks to your clients so i just want to clarify in people's minds that um you know what JP is sharing, hopefully, in, in today's masterclass really was about giving you kind of a different perspective on things, because sometimes, you know, we, we get so focused on, on, on the details and the tech and company building um, that sometimes it's good to kind of zoom out. And this is a, a great zoom out masterclass. Um, anybody has any questions for JP at this point? We have half an hour to go, um, but maybe we can we can. Pause if anybody has any questions specific. Marula. Yeah. Hi, JP. How are you? Thank you so much for this amazing session. And I know all about like maybe a bit about NFTs and uh, Bitcoins and blockchain, actually. But I might like delay my question for the end of this session because I really want to hear more about you, so and like your organization and the NGOs. So I'm gonna hold back just for till you finish your session. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Great, and thank you for breaking the silence, Rula. Anybody has any thought, comment uh, on their mind? You know, just uh, open your mic. Don't be shy. All right, JP. You know, we we'll move forward. All righty. All right. So uh, my, my whole thought process is I want to create as much impact in the world as I can. How do I engage with all the players that are in the world? Uh, so when I look at sustainability uh, and I, I look at nonprofits, like I've been working in nonprofits my entire life, but and so many people have this misnomer that 
To be a nonprofit means that you don't make profits. Uh, to be sustainable, you have to make profits. You have to have a business model where you can, you know, you can't just live off of donations, right? Uh, so, some have been able to do that, but I don't see that being sustainable. True sustainability has a strong business model where you're creating a product that uh, people really want and they're just not buying your product out of pity or like they just wanna like, you know, help the kids. Uh, so I look to engage with all creators on the planet and making impact a focus, but they're just gonna wanna be on this platform because it helps their business anyway. And they just get the additional boost of knowing that it helps save the planet. You know, you don't have to have people leave their comfort zone. If someone isn't naturally comfortable, like engaging in sustainable, uh, like, you know, you know, taking thousands of uh, pieces of plastic out of the ocean, and their, their, their mind is focused on putting food on, on their kids' uh, plates, you know, because like the majority of the planet is one paycheck away from being homeless. You know, like I, I was born and raised in the United States, literally one medical bill, one paycheck away from being homeless. A, so like my, my sister, uh, one, I have three sisters. A, one of them is actually just got a promotion of running all of LA's homelessness. She's a social worker and she has hundreds of social workers now beneath her. Like she, she got promoted from running all the homeless families a, and then now all the homelessness. And like, she tells me stories all the time of like a, how the average person is just living on the edge. And then every year it's getting a little worse because the prices of everything are raising and the wages are pretty much staying the same. So how can we ensure and boost everyone up? How do we create this safety net? How do we, how do we empower all of these impact causes uh, and, and make sure that everyone is able to get a little coin in their pockets where they can pay their rent and they can keep the lights on, right? So, uh, and then not only just survive, but really thrive. Like, like the blockchain offers so much potential. Like imagine, remember when the internet was first came on, you know, like eh, what we were using the internet for, what we thought we could do with it. You know, it took like five minutes just to download one 250K JPEG, you know, like, eh, and then now we have these phones in our pockets that are, that can run, you can run your whole business off. You can run a country off a cell phone now, you know, like eh, we're able to communicate around the world right now and stream with each other. You know, like imagine if Einstein or Da Vinci had this technology, what the, how they could share all this knowledge, right? So how do we utilize this technology for the benefit of the world, right? So, and having that focus and then using this focus that it's not just, uh, oh, I'm donating. I'm like, cause a lot, of, a lot of, you talk to a VC, they're really not caring about your typical VC doesn't care about donations and doesn't care about sustainability. They're only using, like many of them are just using this as greenwashing and as a marketing ploy so their company doesn't look like they're the bad guy. It, you, like, I'm not saying that everyone does, but like you look at the majority of these large companies, like they're, it's just straight up greenwashing. It, now we can change this to where we can show that there is a viable business model for these massive companies to become more sustainable and to create uh, that there actually is a buying public that will spend more money knowing that this product, the providence of this product uh, is sustainable from how it was shipped, from how it was manufactured, to how they treat their employees, to how it was uh, warehoused, you know, like a, from, from A to Z, like how was this product come to the market? Uh, and then you're going to have these savvy like uh, purchasers that that now they know like oh I'm not going to buy on Amazon anymore I'm going to buy on Bali Collective or whatever we call the the this this platform uh, because they know they can see the providence of of these products and they feel good about uh, spending their money there and they don't mind spending. 5% more. And then we can even work with these supply chains and then get the, uh, the, the, the supply so high because we have so many buyers that the price actually goes down. And then the more adoption, the lower the, the lower cost, right? So uh, the more and more, uh, the larger and larger this ecosystem gets, uh, the more viable it becomes, the more sustainable it becomes. So this model, um, 
it is fully replicable. Like in everything that we think about, we look to replicate. If we can't replicate it, it's just a, a waste of our time. A, and time is our most valuable asset. And as I uh, approach 46 this month, I recognize that more and more. <laughs> so uh, as we move on, so we, we look to serve everyone, whether you're like a, a food and beverage or retail, any business, and like a full directory of our NGOs, right? Um, a, we're going to be an e-commerce platform as well as our NFT platform, a, our Web2 e-commerce, this Web3 uh, bridge, you know, and like, so we'll have our Web3 products on our Web2 platform that will that you can still purchase with a normal credit card. So you don't even have to, you don't even have to call it an NFT if you don't want to. You don't, like there's all this blockchain technology is working in the background. It doesn't have to intimidate anyone. You don't have to change the language that you're using. It, you can use this filter that people are very comfortable with now. And then, and then what we do to really bring on more adoption is that the perks that we give people on the Web2 platform are on one level, but then if they adopt the Web3 platform more, they get additional perks. You know, they'll be getting these airdrops. They'll be getting like, uh, like basically free NFTs from other projects. They'll be getting uh, invites to, to events and parties and dinners and, and conferences and, and like uh, meetups that only holders of these NFTs uh, can utilize. You know, it, you can gr bring great value in building community. It, through knowledge, through actually discounts. And uh, the only limitation is our imagination, I say. You know, so, so let's dream big, you know? Uh, so uh, the uses of our Web2 platform, you know, where we're here to uh, explore, connect, and to share, you know? Uh, and we make it free for anyone to add their uh, concept, their business, their ideas to this platform, you know? So, uh, we, we, we load up with, uh, so we're, we'll launch this uh, in December, January, uh, the end of Q4, the, the beginning of Q1, uh, where we're, right now we're, we're beta testing and we're just onboarding uh, hundreds of businesses, soon to be thousands of businesses when we have our official launch. Uh, and then if there's a business that you love or an experience, you can load up you know, your, your favorite waterfall, like uh, you can load up anything like uh, your, your sister's in a band and like uh, you recorded it, you can load up that band's profile. And then we have a team that will review it, make sure that the content is proper. If it's not, we send it back and give them notes. If it is, it comes online and just being coming online, this, this member is now earning points. And the more they contribute to the ecosystem, the more points they get. And then this is tracked through the blockchain and through our Nest app. Uh, every time they make a purchase, every time they share, every time they, they watch a video of your amazing project, uh, they're going to earn points. And then if they share it on a social platform, they'll get more points. So they, they want to be a part of this ecosystem more and more and then bring their friends on and earn more points. You know, so like imagine if you like how many hours you've watched YouTube in your life. Imagine if YouTube actually gave you free stuff for it. Like you can be a user and a content developer for YouTube and then earn, earn from it after you get a certain amount of followers. But imagine coming into that network from day one, being able to earn points and discounts uh, just by in, enjoying the platform, uh, sharing it with your family and friends uh, and, and just living in this ecosystem. And then we're able to adopt more ecosystems onto it. We, we don't believe in, uh, in, in competition. You know, like you could be another directory, you could be another membership form. Like we want to list you on our directory. You know, like we want to share anyone who's doing anything positive for the world. And uh, uh, you know, that, that has a, a beautiful, something beautiful to share, you know? So we hey, adapt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you know, this notion of uh, a dynamic, ongoing, real-time tracking on the chain, right? So we know that the big social networks um, and advertisers, you know, know what we click at, you know, know where our eyes are going, know how much uh, engagement there is. 
but how does that happen technically on the blockchain for me to uh, for the blockchain to be basically uh, monitoring my my digital trail digital footprint if you will technically okay. speaking how would, right. how would that happen so not everything actually needs to be on the blockchain yeah you know it, like the blockchain isn't for everything but this tracking is more within your app and so that we can see uh how like you'll, you'll be earning badges like the more of the impact nfts that you buy you'll be gaining points the more that you uh, engage in the community the more content that you upload the more that you view the more that you spend uh, at any of the businesses that are uh, a part of our network right so we, you earn points through this and it's trackable. So we need to be able to see the points so we can give you the rewards and you need to see it yourself. We don't necessarily share all of that information with everybody. You can share it if you want because people like to share like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Sultan you know, member, you know, like I've earned this amount of points. I'm at the Sultan level, you know, like, and then it's like these bragging rights, you know, like, and, and you, and you want to be able to engage more and more. And then how these DAOs are forming, you know, like the, the more you contribute within the community, the more voting rights you get. So like DAOs are a whole nother rabbit hole that we can dive into. Uh, and Just to we're clarify, actually, the DAOs are distributed autonomous organizations. So they're, they're governed uh, in code, basically, self-organizing organizations. Very interesting uh, emerging field. Um, Great, cool. So, so the points and the and the and the and, and the badges, you know, just happen regularly as uh, on on Web two, if you will. And then at a certain point, you could say, you know, it's like, okay, well, they got those ten badges, and now they're at, you know, the example you use, they're at Sultan level or something. Um, you can encode that, you know, uh, on the chain uh, if need be. But yeah, understood that not everything belongs you know on on the blockchain that's uh, but i was just wondering you know how that yeah, and, the, and the and the so the blockchain also has a lot of work to do because to become more sustainable a like this proof of work uh the proof of ownership like it it burns a lot of electricity you know like all the computers that has to go through to prove like uh that this this providence of, is, yeah. of this you know so there there are more and more uh uh blockchains that are are using solar energy a uh, but but that's a whole other rabbit hole that we can dive into that can we can spend hours upon that as well so uh really it's having your impact on the blockchain is important for for the donors to know for the community to know uh to be able to prove that you're, you know, like cleaning X amount of tons of plastic out of the ocean, or you, you, you uh, had these amount of students go through your program, you know, like whatever you're doing, you need to be able to prove that you're doing this positive impact in the world. You want it to be transparent. You, you want to show that you use these funds in a proper way. It, um, and, and it just brings more accountability. You know, yeah. like there, there's so much fraud in our world, the blockchain can cure a lot of fraud. Uh, and then when it comes to uh, ticketing, when you, when you look at like buying a ticket to a concert, uh, there's so many scalpers and like fake tickets out there with an NFT, like it solves all those problems. But then you're also able to give uh, extra perks to the NFT, like uh, the, the NFT might represent you being able to get backstage and talk to the band, or you, you can... Uh, get a free meal out of it or you just different access you know like you'll get a free download of the album or like you you can apply anything any perk to the NFT at any time you know and at, and you can create tiers within it as well you know so uh, this creates uh, more engagement it creates healthy competition you know like how much good can we uh, bring to the world and then celebrate the people that are doing more good you know and give them more benefits you know, so everyone loves games. Being able to gamify and bring gamification to your project will bring more adopters to your project. Uh, and it, it creates uh, more uh, inclusion uh, and, and growth, you know, because you're able to bring in all other local businesses and other NGOs and, and universities and everyone within our, our, our ecosystems. 
You know, like there, there are no bounds. Like, like I said, like the, the only limits that we have are, is our imagination. And it, it really comes down just to how we communicate. Yeah, that's like, great. So I, I yeah. see you're on slide 20 of 24 and we have 50, around 17 minutes to go and we'd like to create as well some space for everybody to share their thoughts and questions if they have to. So I'll just... Uh, yeah, I, I can really burn through a lot of these because like they kind of go over this conversation already. But like really like so... As we create this larger ecosystem, we really focus on sustainability, right? So uh, we identify, promote, and develop sustainable businesses and supply chains, right? So we have this Web2 e-commerce platform and this Web3 platform for our sustainable businesses to where uh, these, these businesses uh, will have badges, you know, like a, you'll earn badges for uh, how you manufacture to how you transport to how you, uh, uh, all of the different levels of like the, like the UN's, uh, all their benchmarks of sustainability, which ones uh, we're using that as our guide to how you earn, right? So uh, if you can earn these, whoop, awesome, you get this badge. Now the, the, the purchaser of your product can feel better and, and have the security of knowing that they're buying something that is uh, less harmful. Like the, it's impossible to become 100% sustainable. It, uh, just just living and breathing, we, we create a footprint, but we can lessen this footprint. And, and, and the more ways that we can promote this, uh, the more people that adopt it, the, the other industries will adopt it as well. They'll see these tools. They, they'll use the technology that we have because like uh, all this technology is, is like, a lot of it is open source or it's a free download, you know, like a, um, we, we want accessibility is one of the key uh, aspects to, 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 the, to this platform, you know? So, uh, so then it all becomes, the, one of the big things is education. This is uh, one, of the, one of the largest problems that everyone in every industry uh, has is having the public and the people know who you are and what you are. So uh, creating this guide in this directory, we're, we're able to showcase everyone who has the great knowledge. We're able to host workshops online and in person. Uh, we're able to, to curate and, and bring the greatest minds together uh, and showcase them uh, online, in person, uh, and, and have these engagements to where um, we can share and build together. Uh, so it's all about community and collaboration. You know, having this in the forefront of everything that you do, when you present yourself as being a collaborator, as being community oriented, you're gonna find other people and you're gonna open up yourself to people who wanna collaborate and build with you. You know, uh, we, are, we are not islands. Uh, and, and when we put ourselves in the, in the mind space of wanting to build with others, uh, our language changes. Our, our, our posture changes, our tone of voice changes, and all of a sudden we don't see competition, we see opportunity. You know, they, they, I, I read dozens of, uh, of business plans every week and the, the second page is usually the problem. And like, I never see it as the problem. I see it as the opportunity. Where can we build, you know? So, so when, we, when we create our, uh, th this platform, a, we're all about identifying and celebrating what we do well as a community while identifying what we need to fix. You know, like there, there is no guilt trips. There's no pointing fingers. This is a celebration of life and how can we make our life better? And with that attitude, we just constantly find more and more beautiful people every day that want to jump on. They're like, I have this idea. I'm across the planet on over here and we're doing this. How can we work together? You know, and then it's just a, a growing conversation that turns into to real world digital love that turns into physical world love. And like, like I say, like nine months after every one of our festivals, just like watch the amount of babies that are being born because uh, people just, they lose their barriers, you know, like they, 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 they're in a space to where they just feel good about life and they want to share and they, they want to dream bigger they feel that the, the possibility for making a better world is there. And then now we have a technology that not only can prove it, but it, it shows tools and empowerment to where they can earn a revenue from it. 
you know, and they can empower others while empowering themselves. Uh, so, yeah. Amazing stuff, uh, JP, as always. Um, uh, I think the, the ministry, the Indonesian Ministry of Tourism should uh, pay you for this masterclass too. You did a, you did a great job, uh, you know, branding Bali. Uh, in, a, in a beautiful, colorful, well thought out um, slide deck. And, you know, you, you've always been a kick ass in design. So, you know, it's, uh, it's really nice to see that, uh, JP. So, thank you very much. Um, this has been very uh, informative. Uh, I think, if anything, if we leave this masterclass with, with more questions than answers, um, then it, it would be great. Um, we have some uh, minutes left, so we can just have a, a, a quick conversation. Anybody has any questions, anything to bring to the table, um, uh, please do so. And uh, Nadine just shared on the chat the assessment. So please, those who are here, take the one minute to um, give us your opinion on this masterclass. And uh, I guess we go back to Rulla now. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, JB, for this amazing se session. I just, I was actually very emotional about the plastic exchange video. It's, uh, that's actually what we're trying to do, impact people's life, to change and to sustain this planet and human race for the next uh, generations. But I, I have a, just a small question, and I don't know if it's a clear enough for me or not, so please enlighten me. When you said about having dinner for a small group of people, like I know if to make, like to be a, uh, a decision maker, you have to either have power or money. I know that, but do you use Web3 in order to communicate with the, the society? And I don't know, to know actually what they want, like 12 people can't, I know they can make a decision, but do they actually see the world in their view? like the view of the whole society, the normal people. Yeah, it's, it's really just one avenue of being able to communicate and bring community together. So an NFT is really just a, a group of people that now you have in your network and that you can communicate with at any time and that you can give presence to these perks, right? So every, like one of the, the greatest, uh, should I say great is that? One thing about human nature is we all want to belong. Yeah. You know, so in true, yeah. NFT is a membership group. It is belonging to a club, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a club that like through our NFTs, it's a club that is driven by impact and sustainability. Uh, so when we can drive the underlying conversation that we're all coming together to try to make this world a better place and we can curate these dinners. So like, one of the kings might be there, a minister of tourism can be there, but then like several VCs, people with amazing projects, yeah. uh, idea creators, we're all now at a dinner table and we're all able to share. And then like one is a genius marketing, uh, one is an amazing developer, one is uh, just someone who is so keyed in to all the, the levers of power that together we can make great change. So like, like, as part of developing the schools, it, we really started with like three people. Wow. And everyone came to us and be like, you can't change education. Public education is, has X, Y, and Z problems. Mom's on crack, dad's in jail, you know, like they're undocumented citizens, you know, like it's been failing all over the country, like forever. Who were you to think that you could change it? Exactly. We, yeah. Right. So this yeah, is you, need, you need yeah, you need a lot of people to make an impact. Like you can start uh, by a small group of people, but uh, in the end, you need to have a like a big customer base so that you can impact the whole world, not just your area. So, so we started our first school. Mm -hmm. It was a ninth grade, 14, 15 year olds, and then every year we plan the ladder up. We had six teachers, a principal, a vice principal, the chairman of the board, and myself. Wow. Advisory crew that wasn't paid, right? Yeah. With, like, so we went into the highest need areas of Los Angeles. Like I said, 
they had a 75% dropout rate in this community. Nice. Within the first three months of having these children, they tested 50% higher in English and 35% higher in mathematics. Wow. The exact same population of kids. The only difference was, is that we had different expectations for these children. We created a safe, loving learning environment that every, from walking in those doors every second under that roof, they knew that they were gonna be cared for and they weren't gonna fall through the cracks. We, it was not an option, you know? It, and then it doesn't matter if you're seven years old or 70 years old. If you have someone by your side believing in you, that's really all you need. You know, like someone to support you, someone with a kind word that when you give an idea, they're like, no, you can do it because I believe in you, you know? And then just taking all the negativity and the people that say that you can't do something, use it as fuel. You know, like don't, don't believe any of that because just us being here today is a testament to the miracle of life that like of all the possibilities that could be in this universe, we are able to have all of this amazing stuff around us, you know, like, uh, yeah, like every day I wake up counting my blessings, you know, for, for the amazing people that I have in my life to, to all these, uh, the, the resources that we have just to the, the ideas that come into my mind, you know, like uh, they're all miracles, you know? So uh, having a focus uh, and perspective of life that realizing that we could spend every single moment of every single day focusing on the, uh, on the positivity and the light of the world, and we would still not even scratch the surface. There is so much light and positivity running through the universe that we, within our small human minds, we can only conceive a fraction of it. So let's try to dive deeper, you know? Yeah. Let's imagine that there are no boundaries, you know? If yeah, you... I totally get it. I, I know what you mean, because um, like in, in the side of my uh, project as interpreter, I also uh, teach, like I, I'm a tutor. So I, I deal with a lot of uh, kids and I know most of it is just mental. Like when you, when you are ready mentally, you can do absolutely amazing in your study subjects. So I, I'm not gonna take a much uh, time. Just one another question. It's about NFTs, uh, blockchain and everything. I know that it's it's in like in 2010. I know that it's an old, not very old, but you know it's uh, it's been around for a, for a while now. But uh, most people like is it like a stock market? You know, it, it, does it uh, depend on the market and the value of these uh, NFTs or the blockchain? Does it affect by the economic or the politics? Like. Is it, no, uh, NFTs are uh, non-fungible tokens. So like they, yeah. they, they are not based on the stock market at all. Yeah, not, not like Bitcoin, right? That's applied to them. You yeah. know, so, so uh, like people are NFTing land now. You know, so like when you want to buy a property or you can fractionalize your property. So like there's a project here that's being developed to where they're selling one US dollar fractional NFTs to a massive property, like they're buying an island and it will be like a luxury island, but like anyone can be able to get in the profits of this entering with one US dollar, you know? So like, let, let's say you have a, a, your diploma from your university. And then un unfortunately that like God forbid that your house burns down and the diploma's in it. it. You can have this in an NFT form that you can prove, yeah, this is me. You know, like from your, your marriage uh, license to like, anything valuable that you have, your will, you know, like you, you can NFT anything. And, uh, it really has no uh, limits. And then you can add value to it. So if an NFT older has this, if it gives you free flights for life, that has a value. And then you're like, so there's a perceived value to it. Like, oh, you can fly on any airline uh, forever with this NFT. Let's say that that's what it is. That can, uh, that has a value to someone if they fly every week, it has more value than someone that doesn't fly, right? So then you're able to sell that NFT for X amount. Let's say I'm a band, the Rolling Stones, and I'm giving out a, a thousand NFTs, but only the first 10 people that got this NFT get backstage access. So let's say I'm number four of this NFT holder. 
And like, I've already uh, met the Rolling Stones like five times now. Like I went backstage, I had an amazing time. And I, I, I'm on the other side of the planet. I can't go visit them. But someone uh, that's going to their concert, they're like, they can now come to me and I can either rent or sell my NFT to them. You know, because they really want to see the Rolling Stones. And I can put any value I want to this. You know, I might have bought it for $50, but if, it, if this is worth $100,000 of them, I just made $100,000 and I can do it in a rental form to where I'll get it back. Oh, okay. Okay. So that, it's like betting. I know that. But does it, like, when you have a lot of uh, NFTs from this, like the same NFT, okay, you have a lot of, uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, coins or um, points? Points? Is that what you call it? Points? Points, you can talk tokens. In the tokens, yeah, yeah, tokens. Yeah. When you have a lot of tokens, does, does that affect the value of the NFT? Sure. Oh, okay. So, so one person can actually raise the value of an NFT and can actually drop it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, one of the, depending on how you think. Sorry, but JP yeah. mentioned something that you can NFT uh, anything. And, um, you know, just to add to that, uh, leave it to the to the you know financial people to make yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So the thing about nft is that it's unique and it's non-fungible meaning mm -hmm. you, you 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 cannot uh, um, you can you can put a price on it and that price you know the fact that it's unique means it's playing on scarcity right so it's not like there's a hundred thousand nfts there's this one nft that you know this you know, you know famous person created or, or whatever it creates that scarcity and there are marketplaces where people do trade either in actual nfts or in financial products based on nfts so there's a lot of speculation now in the market um we yet it, it, and it is you know since 2010 as you mentioned but it is an emerging technology because we're just starting now to see it uh, seep into different uh, arenas, whether it's banking or, or or finance or healthcare. So, as as JP gave you the example, you know, if somebody wants an NFT uh, that I have and it's scarce, then I can put a price on it, and it will be affected by market dynamics, the pricing. Yeah, and, and, thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, and to get to the question earlier of like truly owning uh, your NFT, so this is answered uh, with our tech partner Nest, right? So uh, they have a short video here. Like, so what they've created is a platform. They call themselves a layer zero. They're completely interoperable. And uh, I'm in Indonesia, so they don't allow Vimeo. One second. Uh, JP, you said we're, we're your slide deck. If you're sharing something else, we're seeing your slide deck. Uh, okay. So we can we can share the link on the chat, and because um, we're we're just about time, um, uh, and they can watch it. But please continue uh, speaking to that. Did JP freeze? Yes. Well, it was good timing for a freeze. <laughs> it's right on point. <laughs> okay, let's uh, give him a couple of seconds. Anybody else has any any uh, any questions? How this could apply? Uh, for you, for example, uh, you know, like what does your contracting look like? Uh, yeah, it looks like JP dropped off the call and he is back. He is. You're muted. Uh, I'm back. Yeah, you, you dropped right off, uh, right on time, an hour and a half. I'm like, okay, JP disappeared. <laughs> Um, jumped into the metaverse. Uh, so uh, on, on that website, uh, uh, nes.tech, uh, there is a video there, it's a short five minute video that really breaks down how using their app gives you true providence 
of your NFTs and how uh, you think you're really owning your digital assets, but you're not. Uh, and uh, they, they've really gone down deep the rabbit hole and are, are some of the most beautiful nerds that I've ever worked with that have been uh, on the forefront uh, of blockchain technology. Uh, and I, I highly suggest that you, you, you download the app now and then just follow them over the next months and years uh, because the, the utilities that they're offering are only growing and are frankly amazing. They're, they're allowing us to take uh, our project and introduce it to anyone who's doing anything pretty much like that anyone that wants to get on web three but also be able to to uh display our works that doesn't even feel like it's web three by by being able to buy crypto assets with a credit card yeah like, there's only one or two companies in the world that have this platform mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fantastic um if nobody has any any additional uh, questions uh JP, I'd like to uh, thank you. This has been uh, heartwarming, uh, enlightening, fun and light. And, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, a lot of people on the call now want to go to Bali. So, <laughs> so bravo. Uh, and thank you for everybody, everybody that has been watching us on the live stream or that will watch this masterclass, hopefully for years to come on our YouTube channel. So uh, thank you all and um, see you in the next masterclass. Yeah, thank you much. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Looking forward to building. <laughs>